Alright, yeah, and welcome back to the third and final episode with our Angel Enchantment Revolt deck. So, uh, a few changes before we get into there. More specifically, a single change, because uh, the deck is pretty much performing exactly as I intended it to. So, uh, the one thing that I've added in that you guys suggested, and I think it is a good idea, is to add in a Suppression Bonds. So, it's a 3 and a white Enchantment Aura. Enchant non-land permanent. That permanent cannot attack and block, and its activated abilities cannot be activated. So this is primarily in here to deal with any kind of planeswalker that we're struggling to deal with ourselves. Maybe we can't fly over the top over their creatures or something like that. If they have clogged up the board and we need to stop them from ultimating, then Suppression Bonds is the card to do it. It's also an aura, which means that Heliod's Pilgrim can grab it. So it's a virtual three of in the deck, even though there is only one to grab. So uh, we've got a Suppression Bonds in there. I didn't really want to cut an isolation zone for that because these guys are in here for mill and we do draw a metric ton worth of cards when we actually start going. So we're doing mill a favour if we don't get rid of their tutelages. So that is the reason I didn't cut that. Uh, what I did go and cut though is a conviction. Now conviction is the build around card and I do understand that but we do draw a lot of cards so we do see them fairly often anyway and once we've got maybe one conviction uh, we don't really need to see another one to get the deck working as intended. We just need to be able to bounce one back and forth. So I think cutting one's not really going to hurt us in any way. We're going to see it a little bit less. But as we mentioned with the Pilgrims, you can actually still grab them anyway. So we've got Pilgrims to grab the Convictions if we don't draw into them. But I don't think having more than one Conviction is really useful to us. Of course, if you lose one into the graveyard, a Rallier can also get it back for you as well. So, you know... I don't think cutting a Conviction, even though it is the build around card, is really going to hurt this deck. And in fact, it may even help it because, as I said, we don't want to fill our hand with it. Anyway, guys, that is going to be the changes. There is a one quick note. Um, you guys mentioned... Oops, I've gone way past. Call for Unity. Now, I did consider this in the original build, but I wasn't entirely sure about it. It makes the deck a little bit too top-heavy, I've found. Uh, but it is a useful card. If you maybe wanted to swap it for um, an aid from the Cowl, or even if you wanted to focus more on creatures and less on the enchantment side, then you cut a Sigil. Um, if you're going to add one of these in, and I would only add one in, to be honest, um, unless you want to completely swap it out, you may even go for like a very heavy uh, white focus one and just cut aid from the Cowl altogether. Um, if you did that, then your little creatures uh, would be a lot better as well, because they get plus one, plus one for each unit counter on it. Um, so it's up to you. It's kind of a little bit of a design change if you do end up putting it into the deck. Um, I just kind of really want to keep the deck running as it is, because it's doing really well so far. So it's it's doing far better than I expected it would be anyway. I'm winning far more than I'm losing, so, you know, once I get closer to rank 40, I'm sure that'll change. But around rank 30, it's doing really well, so... That's not too bad. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the games. Okay, we are in. We're on the draw. We have two lands, white and a green. So we can play the Herald. We have the white for the Blessed Spirits and the Rallier if we hit a land. Suppression Bonds for a Planeswalker or a creature. And a Solemn Recruit if we hit another Planes. I think this is good enough. A Foil Evolving Wilds. Oh my. I'm sure like 90% of the Magic Jewels community you regret putting foils on your things. Okay, gets a Swamp. Are we getting a Jarny? Don't want to see you just yet. I want to see you when I can actually cast you. Because currently you are a dead card in my hand. Next turn we get to play the Herald though, so... A lot of our enchantments are going to be kind of okay. Another foil, Evolving Wilds. This time he's going to grab another black. So he must have another color in his hand. Otherwise I don't understand the Evolving Wilds. Unless he's just really trying to run a, a low land count. I have, I have no idea. Oh yeah, let's get our Herald out. It's a nice bit of fodder onto the ground for Fatal Pushes and other removal spells. And currently our only threat on the board. There's a Dynavolt Tower. Okay. Foiled as well. This must be our friend's favourite deck. To get so much treatment. There's a Conviction. It's not too bad. It's gone again as a life. 
It's something we can trigger Revolt with. And we can defend against Dynavolt Tower, taking down our Herald this way as well. Alright. Let the three point swings every single turn begin. And murder. <laughs> Goodbye, Herald. You are my only threat. Come on, land. 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 Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. I see how this game's going. There's an island. Our opponent passes, leaving up probably a ton of removal. There's a land. Yes. It's the wrong colour, unfortunately, so I'm going to go with Blessed Spirits. I want to hold off on the Rallyers until I can maybe trigger Revolt on them. Drawing an Evolving Wild to next turn, for example, will do that for me. And it'll also allow me to get the planes then for the Solemn Recruit. And it'll grab back the Evolving Wild so I can trigger said Solemn Recruit. There is a Sun Petal Grove. Let's swing in first. So I want to see him remove this creature so that I can play some petal into just cellar. Nope. He does not care about my blessed spirits. Um, we could suppression bonds this guy so that he can't burn us with it, but he's holding up counters. Which is a problem. I guess maybe I throw out some fodder then. Solemn Recruit. Kind of really like Gisela in this matchup. So I'd like to keep her around if at all possible. But these kind of colours. It's counter spells, removal and burn. So let's go with a Recruit. And watch it die. Yep. And I bet you it was enough to kill just Seller as well when the time came. He's just going to wait until we attack by the looks of it. Or a Languish. Languish works as well. But that would have killed Gisela. Fair play. There was no pause when we played our recruit. So uh, unless he snap made the decision that he does not care about our recruit or he doesn't have a counter spell. That being said, this deals three damage to target creature or player, so suppression bonds on that right now to keep our Gisela alive next turn. Player planes, pass the turn. Close to uh, Ajani here, so we can get some extreme card advantage if he ever taps out. We still need one more land though, so if we don't draw a land, then we Gisela. If we do, then we Ajani, as long as I'm confident that he doesn't have a counter. Gotta have a counter, aren't they? <sighs> he's got removal, he's got board wipes. Blue is for counters and card draw. Red's for his burn. We haven't seen any of his burn yet. Maybe I just play a rallier to fake him out and see if he wants to try and tap out next turn instead are we in a rush to kill him I just don't think we are though the longer he goes the more powerful he gets of course let's play a rally let's see if we can no okay I'm not gonna play the other one though because that just has radiant flames written all over it at least this is a little bit of pressure for him to spend mana on Artifice is Epiphany. Gets him some energy. Draws two cards. Can't use that energy. Which is good. There's that Gear Hulk right there. Methinks it is. Okay, swing in for three. Damn you. 
damn you and your patient nature. Okay. Um. Ah. Uh, it's just drawn two extra cards, so if he didn't have a counter, the odds are he does now. Renegade Rallyer. Planes. Pass the turn. Not playing Gisela into a board wipe. Evolving Wilds. And he's got another Dynavolt Tower for the Gisela and all of that as well. Cracks the Evolving Wilds. Gets a Schwamp. Hmm. Yeheni's expertise to wipe the board and then he gets to play a three or less converted mana cost card. But now we get to play a Jani. Unfortunately, he can ping it for three every turn, so it's not going to last very long. But if we play Gisela down as well, then he has to focus between them. And a Conviction as well. Not bad. A Jani's going to at least refill our hand a little bit as well. In the process. So, let's tick up to six. We get a Sigil and a Sylvan Advocate. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Especially with Conviction. So. Now he can kill Johnny if he wants to. So we have no removal for this Dynavolt Tower. So there's no reason to play around it anymore. But that paves the way for our Gisela now. I just need that Sigil to land. The Sigil is perfect for this current board state. So, Advocate, do you want to block it? I have not block it, counter it. There's no way he's got counters then. No way. So we sigil. He resolves. Okay. Alright. Our opponent is either not running counter spells or he doesn't have them. The longer this game goes on, the more I think he's just not running counters. Because there is very little chance that he's not drawn into one if he had them. Unlicensed Disintegration. Nice bit of removal for our Advocate. That's fine though. So we have Conviction to make 4-4s four every single turn. So we can go crazy. Tyler's Tracker or just Seller? Uh, I think we'll go Tireless Tracker here, because we can make the clue from our land drop. We can still stick Conviction on it. Oh no, we can't. It won't survive. In response, he murders. Okay. He could have used his Dynavolt trigger there, but I suppose he wants to use it on our faces. Because we can't stick Gisela until after that Dynavolt Tower's tapped down. Elliot's Pilgrim. Did we get Angelic Destiny yet? We didn't. Let's get Elliot's Pilgrim down. It'll never stick to anything, though. That's the thing. But that's four. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'd need to get to 10 mana with this Heliod's Pilgrim alive so that we could stick we could bait him essentially with one of these cards to tap him down on our turn and then we get to Gisela and save it with the Angelic Destiny so do we try to use Conviction now or do we just wait
Well, we go Evolving Wilds, we crack it for a Plains. Yeah, if we waited one more turn, he just has to have removal though, that's the thing, so that, that whole plan just falls on its ass. So, let's just use Conviction. Alright. Taps down the Dynavolt Tower to take down the Heliod's Pilgrim. Angelic Destiny makes us another angel and it makes us have an 8-8 eight eight on the board. But removal means that we lose the destiny. And that seems to be all he's running right now. If we play Gisela, he just untaps and kills it. But then he probably doesn't have the energy to do it again. I think we're just going to pass. See what he wants to do with this angel token. We, we've we lost two of our three convictions. Okay. And we have another Heliod's Pilgrim to find one as well. So there's technically two convictions in the deck. So he's going to plus Liliana. Rise from the tides. Yeah, that's going to do it. That'll do it, alright. Yup. Alright. Swing at Liliana. Convince him to maybe make the mistake of tapping down his Dynavolt Tower. Paves the way for Gisela plus Angelic Destiny. If he doesn't have removal, it sticks, and we should be able to gain life off of that for quite some time. If he doesn't have removal, which is asking a lot, of course. There's your unlicensed disintegration. We still get a 4 4, but we're pretty dead. We lose 3 life. We get an angel. Jell Destiny goes to the graveyard. That was our real, really our only out, and there was no playing around that. Minus is Liliana for the emblem. If we could attack with this angel for three turns without dying, we'd be all good, but of course we can't. Lock one of the zombies. He's going to get loads on his end step anyway. Seven, to be exact. Heliod's Pilgrim. Grab Conviction. Yes. Conviction. Conviction on the Angel Token. <laughs> We're wasting our time here, of course. But... Bounce the conviction. Conviction on the angel token. Get another angel. It's four blockers, but he's got way more than we do anyway, so. It's gonna do it. Can hit him for five. He's gonna wait us for far more. So let's send a message before we go. Suck it. Yeah. It's a win in my books. Hmm, tough matchup if we'd have had artifact removal. It's maybe the one occasion where the three drop um, artifact enchantment removal card is probably better here, but you can't play against every single card in Magic Jewels, unfortunately. There are always going to be bad matchups, it's just can you slightly compensate for a few of them? Which is what Suppression Bonds is in here for. And the reason why we still have Isolation Zones as well. Isolation Zones deal with Mill. 
Suppression Bonds apparently deals with Dynavolt Towers and uh, Super Friends as well, so we've got that balance, but, you know, can't win them all. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next game. All right, so we are on the draw. We have both of our green and white sources, plus double white for our recruits when we get there and our sigils later down the line. They're going to cost four mana if Herald lasts long enough as well, so yeah, seems good enough to me. Let's keep it. Evolving Wilds for our opponent. Is he going to show us what he's playing? No, he's a sneaky player. All right. Renegade Rallyer, if we hit our land, a bridal growth is going to help with that. Although we can't really hit it on curve, unfortunately. Unless we want to hold off on the Herald there, which I'm not sure. Depends on what colour our opponent reveals here, I suppose. It is white. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Ah. Those were the colours I was worried about. Interesting. Well, there's our planes. So, we could either herald next turn, maybe suit it up with Nimbus Wings, or we can Unbridled Growth now, next turn crack the Unbridled Growth, trigger Revolt, get Renegade Rallyer down, get Unbridled Growth back, trigger again, draw another card, which then maybe gets us to enough lands to cast a Sigil. I think that's probably the best thing to do here, honestly. So, stick that on here. Pass the turn. Save that for next turn. All right. Seems our opponent is playing some sort of control deck if they're not going to play anything here. What it is, is another question. But if you want to kill the Rallyer over the Herald, I'd be mighty appreciative of that. There's the mana we needed. Right. Sack that. Draw a card. There's a Saram. Not bad, not bad. Well, we'll get the Renegade Rallyer back. And get the Umbrail Growth back. Let's draw another card. Stick it on one of these planes back here. Pass the turn, see if our opponent's got any removal. So we'll hold that growth until we need to crack it for uh, Revolt. Or until our opponent tries to remove it. Or until we need to draw a card. Either one. We have options. Alright, four colour. Is this super friends again? Ah. Uh, Fun, fun, fun. Hmm. We've seen nothing from our opponent other than the lands, so that's the only thing I can really go off on here. Yeah, he's gonna radiant flames away a single rallyer. Cool. That's fine. There's a Solemn Recruit, so there's a reason to have that Revolt Trigger hanging around now. Uh, so, if Herald survives, we get Sigil down next. So, if we head uh, Herald into his one white mana, which is fine, we could Nimbus Wings up then, make it a 3-4, which is kind of enough to hold a back removal. Otherwise, we need to draw a land before we could Sigil. I'm not even certain that the Sigil's going to stick around long enough, to be honest. So, let's do it. Nimbus Wings. Gain a life. And we've got ourselves a pretty hefty creature there that's doing some work. So, next turn, Sigil, if Herald lives. And then we can play Sigil to make a 4-4. And then we can make two 4-4s four off of every enchantment then. So if we get Conviction, it's game over. If he doesn't remove our Sigils anyway. Uh, 
That is, of course, how he can undo this plan in a matter of moments. <laughs> is by having enchantment removal for both of them. So Nissa comes down, gets him a forest. Uh, does not flip her if he plays that forest just yet. He needs seven, doesn't he? Yep, seven. And that will put him to six. He's already made his land drop, maybe, I guess. All right. So let's play Sigil. Gain a life. Play the forest. Swing for four. See, uh, swing for three. Sorry. See if he's got an answer. Won't mind a rallier now, because then we could get on bridal growth back. Oh no, it's not a cast trigger. Never mind. I was thinking back to our hand, and then I realised it comes straight to the battlefield. Although, can we ask for it to come? No. It has to go to the battlefield. Alright. Dragon Skull Summit. That's his sixth land. Next turn, Nissa flips, whether he likes it or not. If he's got a land. He must have something to do right now. All he's done is wiped a rallier off the board with a Radiant Flames. Like, answering this Herald is probably a really good idea. There's a Chandra. So he can hit us for six. Or he could kill his own Nyssa. Yeah, he's not really going to do either of those things. So he gets to hit us for a lot here. Yes, it does hurt, but... I get to play another Sigil down and get a 4-4, four four, which blocks these three ones. There's a bygone bishop. Alright, Sigil. Get ourselves a 4-4. Four four. Alright. And then let's hit the Chandra. Down to 2 to make sure he can't wipe our board if he wants to. So, ticking up is the only thing he can do now. So, if he plays a land, Nissa goes, and we only take three. And then Chandra dies next turn. Flips his Nissa, so languish here then, I guess. It would hurt, because we are out of enchantments. Radiant Flames. And minus one Nissa then. Okay. I'm going to sack this on Bridal Growth, see if we can find something interesting. No. That was a mistake, actually. I should have waited for the Solemn Recruit to land. I'm not even sure if I want to play the Solemn Recruit next turn, though. That's the thing, because I might want to bygone Bishop into Saram and get a clue token instead. So I was kind of hoping for another unbridled growth for two 4-4s. There's a planar outburst. Alright. So we know that nothing we ever play will matter. And there's a Gideon. So this is Super Friends again. Yay. Yay. Fun, fun, fun. Alright. Makes an ally. Passes. Conviction. Alright. We can do a lot here. So, if we go Saram and Conviction, that's four mana. We can pay one to get the Conviction back, and then next turn we can Bygone Bishop, Conviction, pay the one mana to get it back, and we get some 4 fours as well. So even through a board wipe, we're doing a fair bit of work. Yeah. We can even Solemn Recruit Conviction as well. So... Stick Conviction on Saram, draw a card, get two 4-4s, four an Unbridled Growth means we get two more 4-4s, four which forces that Planar Outburst, I think. Or do I just want to wait on him wiping the board first so that we can do a bigger board next time? I think we wait. Wait until after the board wipe, we know he has. Because you can't minus Nyssa. There's nothing Nyssa, uh, 
Minus Nissa, minus Chandra. There's nothing Nissa can really do. Gideon isn't going to do a great deal. So these sigils are a lot of pressure on his planeswalkers right now. Plus his Nissa finds himself a canopy vista. Alright, ramps him a little bit. I think he can awaken the planar outburst. If my memory serves me correctly, because I think it takes three white and five colourless. But he'd have a tap land as a three or four four. One of those. And then we can just set up our board again. There's your planar outburst. If he taps out, yeah, with Awaken. So in response, we're going to pull this Conviction back to our hand. So we lose our Sram and our two 4-4s. Four he gets a 4-4 four four land. And then we get to rebuild our board bigger than before. You can hit us for 5... 11. It's a lot of damage. So he's got to have the right answers here. And so have we. I haven't done the math yet to find out if we have enough to do what we want to do. There's a angelic destiny. Right. Bygone Bishop. On bridal growth on the plains. Get two four fours. Conviction on the bygone bishop. Get two more four fours. Yeah, I think we can uh, live through whatever he's got. Actually, another planar outburst kills us. Any board wipe of any kind bit uh, kills us here. Oath of Nyssa will not find him the board wipe he seeks. It's creature, land, or planeswalker. He finds a Sorin. Ew. And you can cast Sorin. He can completely wipe out the Bygone Bishop if he wants to stop our sigils from going off here. Which is the right play to do. from our perspective anyway. I'm not sure what the right play from his would be. He's going to tick up. If he hits four or more convert mana costs, he takes it to one. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, so we've got to block everything he throws at us here, but I don't think it kills us. He's going to be attacking in with four things. We can block one of them easily. Chump, 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 the rest. We keep some angels around. And then we just start triggering conviction back and forth over and over again. So, man lands up his Gideon. Unfortunately, though, we've got to get rid of Sorin. Because if he hits anything other than a land, we're going to die. Oath of Liliana. Can't cast that yet, but that is a problem. It's going to cut down on our creature count. I think we have to sack the Unbridled Growth to draw a card next turn. Alright. Um, I will trade off this land. And we will chump here. And do nothing. Has he... He hasn't done his Chandra yet, has he? No, he's not. I don't want to risk losing the Bygone Bishop because that just absolutely guarantees we lose. So we'll chump there. Picks up Chandra. Yeah, so he was holding the minus there to try kill our bishop. 
We get an isolation zone. Alright, unbridled growth. Just sell her. If only we could haste you out, you'd be a lot better. So we can pay one to get the conviction back. We can pay two to bring it back, get two more angels. Pay one to bring it back. We can get four angels on the board. Which blocks, blocks, blocks. Seven. Seven there, yes. I think we might have just pulled it out here. So let's go to attacks first. We know he's got an oath of Liliana as well though. So four, five, six, seven. Three at the Chandra. He's only got one thing coming in for an attack next turn. Plus we sacrifice, plus... And he's not going to get a zombie from that, actually, so... Bounce Conviction. Play Conviction. Get two 4-4s. Four four Bounce Conviction. Play Conviction. Get two more 4-4s. Four We're dead to a board wipe. Same as always. But now we have a board state that we can survive on. And we can play Gisela without losing it. Ticks up Nissa. We're gonna have to hit Nissa, I think. Uh, three damage to a creature and opponent controls. And if he plays a planeswalker, we die with Chandra's Oath of Chandra on the board. But we can get rid of it with Isolation Zone. So as long as he doesn't have Oath of Chandra into a Planeswalker, we're good. Plays a land. This might be the first Super Friends matchup I've had in a long time that I'm actually genuinely enjoying. It's so tense. Oath of Chandra. Okay. So he gets to deal three damage to one of our four fours. Or our three six. Depending on what he wants to do. He could have another Radiant Flames to get rid of Conviction. Oh, he's got another Oath of Chandra, so we're going to Legend Rule the old one, kill our Bygone Bishop, stop our shenanigans in their tracks. That's only one Conviction, though, so we could still draw into another one. Cultivator's Caravan. Not a Planeswalker. Two mana left. He's done. Oh. Continue playing. Woo. Eight. Sixteen. <laughs> Lethal. Gets in with his five. We're forced to block. Wow. Just wow. Alright. Canopy Vista. Whew. Let's, uh... Should we make sure that we win right now? Angelic Destiny. On one of the angels. Make some more angels. There we go. Swing in with everything at our opponent. Oh my... <laughs> Super Friends Dune. And there we go. So many times I thought I'd lost that, but that was such a good game. I always enjoy games that go really close like that. Even if it's down to me punting that it got that close, I still 
love that game won't change it for the world anyway guys um there is going to be an announcement video coming soon i'm saying this right now so that i actually make the video and you can question me about where it is for the rest of eternity there is an announcement video and 90 percent of you at the very least are going to enjoy what you hear from it so if you do see a video with announcement written on it then be sure to check it out it probably will intrigue you and you probably want to get involved so be sure to do that also, if you'd be so kind, could you uh, like and subscribe the video? That would be pretty good as well. And be sure to stay for the end card as well for the rest of the content as well as the deck tech for the video. And hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button to be notified when that announcement video comes out. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed that match as much as I did and I will see you next time. Bye bye.